What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode. This is episode number 43. We started today's of stuff on the back of our win over Victoria Paulsen, 1-0 away in the Czech Republic. Halfway through our first ever Europa League adventure and we're currently just one win away from qualification. Exactly what I was predicting when the group was drawn at the start of the season. And we return to Premier League matters for the first game of today's episode, Wolves, here at St Mary's. And I swear, taking on Wolves... Sometimes, like, they just play this ridiculously attractive football that is so hard to stop. And to start the game off, we fell behind just 18 minutes in with a nice little team goal stepping in from the left and we're behind at St Mary's. Wolves are such a difficult team to face in FIFA crew. And don't get me wrong, they're a great side. And, you know, I mentioned before, I think Bruno Large this season is not getting as much credit as he probably deserves for his first season in the Premier League. You know, losing Rui Patricio, uh, their uh, goalkeeper, uh, leader, experienced goalkeeper between the sticks. You know, uh, replacing with Jose. So I, I think I think he's done some great business, and I think the team as a whole have been really fun to watch this season. And I think Bruno Lage has done a great job as well this year. I have to say, for the Premier League this season, there are so many managers that have really, I would say, performed above expectations. Thomas Franca has done a sensational job with Brentford. Eddie Howe, since coming into St James's Park, has done a great job with Newcastle since taking over from Steve Bruce. Uh, you know, David Moyes, I've always been a huge fan of David Moyes, as you know. What a great job he's doing with West Ham this season. But I think I think Bruno Lage as well really deserves a lot of plaudits for his first season in English football. What he's doing with Wolves, taking over from Nuno, I think he's done a tremendous job this year. He deserves a lot of credit. Even so, despite his team taking the lead in this game, he would come from behind to win it. Uh, Adam Armstrong scored scored our first and his second goal in two. Hadn't scored a goal all season long, Adam Armstrong. We're now two goals in two in all competitions. There were 23 minutes to go. Che Adams wins us the game. Second time in three games, Che Adams has come up with a game winner for us. Clutch Che Adams there. Well, not really clutch, 23 minutes on the clock, but even so. Che with a winning goal once again in a 2-1 victory there at St. Mary. So another big win. And as things stand, we remain in fourth place. Nine games into the season, and we're now starting to wonder, well, were the board being realistic at the start of the season when they said to us, you got to finish the top four, qualify with the Champions League. And do you remember when I saw that objective, I was like, what are you talking about? Well, actually, now I'm starting to think maybe, 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 maybe the board were being very realistic indeed. This is a young team. It's developing really well. We've got some superstars in Ritsu and Salisu in the back line as well. We were giving a £100 million budget at the start of the season as well. Maybe the board were right to say we should be qualifying for the Challenge League for Season 4. Because right now, we're on course to do so. Long way to go, of course. But a big win there does keep us in the Champions League spots. Anyway, for the second game of today's episode, Bow on the South Coast here. Taking on Graham Potter's Brighton. Starting the game off. Great save by Pickford. Kept it at 0-0. And in 26 minutes in. Oh, what took you so long? 3-in-3 three three for Adam Armstrong. And finally, he's been wound up. And now he's firing on all cylinders. Second in five in the Premier League. And three in a row in all competitions. Armstrong finally finding his feet after a tough start this season. So 1-0 to the Saints and then 7 minutes for the break. You're a chance to make it too. Look man finds Armstrong. Man of the moment so far into Che Adams. Rolls it through to JWP. Great save here down to his left though to keep Ward Prowse from scoring his second of the season. So still leading by 1 in the game. And I mentioned before, you know, we're not a team that pick up many scouts. 2 so far in the series and they both came this season in the Premier League. Both in North for London against Arsenal and Spurs. So if we are to be a top four team, I mentioned before, these are the games we must win. We must capitalise and beat the teams right now that are outside the European places if we are to be a consistent European team ourselves. And in this game, I thought I played quite well, but my defence was looking a little bit shaky at times with 22 minutes to go. Great piece of dribbling by Mac Allister. Whips it across the middle and turned in from close range as Brighton came back on level terms. This was a great game though. Really, really challenging indeed and I think I've mentioned before but like these are these are my favorite types of games I want to say by Pickford late on here 50 minutes to go to ensure we would get a point and whilst our winning run was ended we do get ourselves a credible draw away at the Amex here against Brighton I really enjoy these type of games because they're just so challenging and they're so unpredictable as well you know you go into certain games and they're really really I wouldn't say telegraphed but you kind of expect the game to go the way it does they're you know, again, I would never, never, never say that 
FIFA is scripted because I don't believe it is. But they do feel kind of like, you know, you, you know how the game's going to go for the most part. But I love those games that are so unpredictable now. Away against Brighton, I'll take the point. And it does mean six wins in ten. We're still in the top four. Only by one point, no clear of Leeds and four clear of Everton and Chelsea as well. It's a long way to go. We've just got past the quarter stage of the season. Plenty of the season remaining. So not going to read too much into this. But still in the top four just for now. And again, I, I have just started to think, you know, at the start of the season, I said it's kind of unrealistic for us to be targeting the top four place. You know what? Last season, we only missed out on it on the final day. Why not? You know, seriously, why can't we be a Champions League team next season? Okay, all right, there's no doubt about it. We're definitely the rank outsiders, of course. But when you look at some teams start the season off that are struggling, particularly Manchester City... Well, if they continue to struggle for most of the season, there's no reason why we can't capitalise on it. The key, though, is going to be making sure we do pick up one or two more scouts to add to the wins against Arsenal and Spurs we had at the start of the season. We might have another chance to get another one here in November where it's down for Bridge, our final fixture against Chelsea in the Premier League this month as well. And we need to make sure we don't have slip-ups like in that game against Brighton there. Um... I'm going to give it my best shot. My, my aim has not changed. I still think this season, 5th and 6th, is where we should be targeting. But why can't we sneak into the top four like the board suggested at the start of the season? I'm definitely going to be giving it my absolute best. Anyway, third game of today's episode. First one in November, uh, match day four, Europa League group stage, Victoria pulls it. Heading into the game on the back of the draw against Brighton, I was thinking, right, okay, disappointing slip up there away against the Almex, but win this game, we're back on track, and we'll also guarantee qualification with a uh, with uh, two games to spare as well. We won't guarantee top spot, we will guarantee qualification with two games remaining. So right from the very first whistle, in attack mode, and eight minutes in, oh, goodness. Talked about him in the last episode, couple of games without a goal, back on the score sheet, Gareth Bale. Yep, Bale, unbelievable, man. Seriously, it's coming in on a free transfer after his release from Real Madrid. Back where he is loved, and he's still got it as well. He's not got the pace anymore. He's, you know, the truth is he's, he's not the same player. He's not quite as good, but he still is delivering for us on multiple occasions. Just like he does there, opens the scoring. And after a Brecht cheese, they hit the post soon afterwards. It was all one-way traffic in the first half. Right before the break, a chance make it two. A Brecht and Shea play one, two. Once again, it's Eze stepping in from the left-hand side, and this time he gets it right. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. First it the woodwork second time squeezes it in between the far post and the goalkeeper for our second goal right before the break so as things stand on course for qualification 12 minutes after the restart a chance to make it free we come on the counter with Chamberlain finding Ward Prowse what a ball this is to Nathan Redmond and he gets the hockey assist as Nathan swept it across for a Brecci second of the game I couldn't wait to show you that man Ward Prowse what an assist it would have been instead it's a hockey assist glorious free ball and a Brecci gets his third in the Europa League in four games. I just don't know what to do with Eze because like, he's such a good player. He's our club record signing, but I mentioned we signed him with Southampton. We play a flat 4-4-2, and Eze is not going to get you know, the best out of Eze. We're not going to get the best out of Eze playing deeper in this team. He needs to play further forward or possibly on the wing. So I'm thinking all the games he started for us so far have been on the left-hand side, including this one where he netted his hat-trick for Southampton, his first hat-trick for Southampton in a 4-0 win against Victoria Paulson that does guarantee qualification with two games to spare. I am thinking what I might do with Eze is convert it to a left-winger. The only reason I don't want to do that is because we've got a tremendous amount of good wingers here at the club and young wingers as well. You know, obviously Adam Ola Lookman is on the left for us. Ritsu will always be on the right, being an inside forward with the left foot as well. But on the left-hand side, you know, you've got obviously Lookman who starts for us. Then you've got Lewis Potter. Then you've got Brennan Johnson. Redmond gets some game time. And also, don't forget, we just got the youngster in the academy, Marcel who might well be our best academy graduate when he gets a pro deal so far in a save. So it's really hard to know what to do with Eze. It's like we've got this really quality club record signing, but I can't really fit him into the team. It's so frustrating. So at the moment, he's getting sporadic games on. It's nice to know when he does play, he doesn't let us down. Hattrick in the 4-0 win there, and that does mean qualification to bag with two games to go. Beat Shamrock Rovers on match day five, and I mean on match day six. A point against Real and Tisa away in Spain would also guarantee top spot as well. And the, the, the group for me is not done yet. You know, we might have got qualification, but I really want top spot, and I want that buy as well. Anyway, for the final game of today's episode, West Bromwich Albion, 
newly promoted back to the Premier League. 15 minutes into the game against Steve Bruce's side. Oh my goodness. Ritsu, so good. You know, his goal to game ratio has not been that great, you know. Like, seriously, I think season one, he was able to be a star because in season two, Bale came back. Adams and Armstrong found their feet more consistently. But Ritsu, to me, is still one of the stars of this team. What a goal that was to make it 1 0. And in 65 minutes, it almost went 2 0 up. Che Adams looping the ball over the goalkeeper off the crossbar, still leading by one. But really, for the most part in this game, all one-way traffic, just like against Victoria Paulson. And after West Brom failed to get the danger clear, Adam Ola, look, man, we just talked about those inside fours on the left-hand side. That's why Eze can't get consistent game time, man, because right now there's just so much competition in that position. Great finish by Lookman. He makes it 2-0, and then 77 minutes in, a chance to make it free. Stepping in from the left, hitting the crossbar, and the baggies would try and clear, give it away, and Mina Mina gets our third as well. The baggies surrender possession for all three goals we scored in this game here. Really, the Masters are their own downfall, but this was nice to see. Mina Mina. Coming in from Liverpool, haven't seen him too much. Most of his game times come off the bench, but the Japanese forward makes it free and wraps the points up there with his first goal of the season and almost got his fourth as well. How many times did I hit the woodwork in today's episode? Mino Mino off the woodwork once again in a 3-0 win that could easily have been 6 or 7-0, but we'll take the victory there against the newly promoted baggies right now in the bottom three and extend our unbeaten run in the Premier League. Right now for the Saints, guaranteed qualification in the Europa League group stage. Might be out in the EFL Cup, but it's proved to be a blessing in disguise. In the Premier League right now, we remain in fourth place. Only two behind the league leaders, undefeated Manchester United. One clear of Leeds, we can't shake them off yet, but five clear of Arsenal and Spurs as well. Great start for the Saints as we continue to stay in a Champions League spot. But that will be today's episode of the Realistic Career, guys. Big thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, give it a big like. like. Most of you have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of the Realistic Career Mode very soon.